You've probably seen memes like this one going around that compare ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs with our modern emoji. But how did Egyptian hieroglyphs actually work? Were they like our modern emoji? In this video, I'll walk you through what you need to know about how ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs worked so you'll know if they were like emoji and you'll have the tools that you need so you can start learning how to read hieroglyphs too. Welcome to Voices of Ancient Egypt, where we demystify the words and lives of the ancient Egyptians through animated videos like this one. If you're new here, I'd love to have you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss future videos like this one. Hi everyone, let's jump right into the three things that you need to know about Egyptian hieroglyphs to understand why, and little spoiler alert here, they were both a little bit like emoji, but mostly not like emoji. Number one, most hieroglyphs were not like emoji. How many of you can relate to this? And perhaps I'm really dating myself here, but when I was a kid, I got a magazine called Highlights, which was a magazine that was just for children and it included stories, games, puzzles, and riddles. One of the common types of puzzles was the rebus story. That is, they were stories written out with pictures, numbers, and letters instead of words. And when you sounded out these pictures, numbers, and letters, they told the story. They were always really exciting to figure out. And perhaps you've even used something like this yourself without realizing it. Have you ever passed a note, for example, that looks like this one? With an eye, a heart, and a sheep on it, perhaps? So did you send a note like this to somebody in grade school? How did you and the person that you gave it to understand what it meant? Clearly, you weren't trying to tell them something about an eyeball, a heart, and an animal, right? This stands for the phrase, I love you. And if you're a native speaker of English, you probably start to realize how this is working right away, even if you've never used one of these yourself. We use the I, which normally you would spell the word E-Y-E -E for an eyeball, right? the part of their body, the I. But here, instead, we're letting it stand in for the sound I, which is exactly the same thing that we do when we pronounce what's called the first person pronoun, I, as in when you're talking about yourself. Similarly, the picture of the female sheep, um, this one's a little harder to figure out because it's a less common term, but a female sheep is often called a U. Now this is spelled E-W-E, -E, but it's pronounced just like the word you, Y-O-U, as in I'm talking to you. Now the I and the U, of course, are being used as what we call rebuses. That is, they stand for their sound rather than for the original meaning of the pictures. But the heart, on the other hand, is actually being used for a kind of extended meaning of the picture, right? The heart is standing in for the concept of love. We're not treating it as the sounds heart, but instead for the concept. And this is a little closer to how we actually use modern emoji, right? You might send a heart to somebody in a text message to let them know that you love them, but you're probably not gonna send them an eyeball and a sheet, right? Now, right about now, you're probably wondering why the heck I'm telling you about children's rebus puzzles, right? It's because most ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs actually worked this exact same way as the I and the U. Hieroglyphic writing is a form of writing that uses pictures, but they're used mostly to represent sounds, like rebus puzzles. It's pretty common, though, for people to think that ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs were what you might call picture writing. In other words, that each sign represents a thing or some kind of related concept, similar to the way we use modern emoji, like the heart for the concept of love. And I find that even my university students who are taking Egyptology classes, usually this is what they think when they start. It's a super common idea. But it's really quite different in hieroglyphs than it is from how we use emoji. So like if you were going to send somebody, for example, an ice cream emoji in a text message, your friends would probably understand that you're actually talking about ice cream or like eating ice cream rather than trying to tell them I scream, like as in letting them know that you're screaming. Um, this is not how we use emoji, but this is how ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs mostly work. You use a picture of something to stand in for the sound to mean something else. So before moving on to number two, which is coming up in just a moment, I wanted to let you know that I have a free guide on how hieroglyphs work and how to start reading and writing names. And it has these examples as well as many more. And you can grab it for free by heading over to my website at voicesofancientegypt.com slash guide. 
That's voicesofancientegypt.com slash guide. So head over there and you can just pick it up and download it right away. Number two. Okay, despite what I just told you, hieroglyphs could sometimes be used to represent what they pictured. Although more often they were used for the sounds. In other words, sometimes they were like our modern emoji, but most of the time they weren't. So as I already pointed out, hieroglyphs generally did not work like the heart example above or the ice cream example. Instead, they worked like the eye and the female sheep or you that I showed you. So let's see an example in actual Egyptian hieroglyphs. This hieroglyph, which is a basic plan drawing for a house, represents the sounds of the letters P and R, which spell out the word for house. So this hieroglyph can actually be used to write the word for house, which is what it pictures also. But it's also very often used for the sounds, the P and the R. So for example, the Egyptian word for to go out is spelled with a P and an R. And so they use this house hieroglyph to spell the word to go out. And this is of course exactly the same kind of use of how we were using that eye before, that eyeball, to represent not a body part, but in fact the word I, as in the pronoun referring to myself. All right, let's look at one last example in English, right? One that's not from a children's magazine. It's not a Rebus puzzle. But you might have seen this before sometime in the last decade or two, particularly before you got a smartphone with a full keyboard. It's part of what we might call text speak, right? The letter C, the letter U, then the letter L, the number eight, and the letter R. And of course, this is not meant to be some incomprehensible string of letters and numbers, but instead is communicating the sentence, see you later. We're using the C and the U for their names, the sound of their names, right? Not their usual letter sounds. We're not using the C as a K or a S. We're using it for its name, C, which sounds just like the English word C that's spelled S-E-E. -E. And then U, same thing. We're not using it as U or anything like that. We're using it for its, the sound of its name, U, as in Y-O-U. The L, on the other hand, is actually being used as a normal letter, a L sound, but the number eight, is also being used here for the sound of its name. And then the R also for an R sound. So from that, we get see you later, right? And if you're an Engl a native English speaker, this probably isn't too hard to figure out even if you haven't used it before, but it can be challenging if English is not your native language. This is also the case, of course, when us moderns are learning Egyptian hieroglyphs. It's a lot harder when you're not a native speaker. Now, most hieroglyphs, like the house example above, of course, work this way. And this is something that scholars actually refer to as the rebus principle. It applies both to the rebus puzzles we talked about, but also to writing systems like hieroglyphs that do this, that take a picture and then use them for the sound of the name of the item that they picture. Number three, there were no vowels in hieroglyphs. Now, you might have noticed that I didn't mention any vowels when I was talking about the Egyptian words for house and to go out. And perhaps you are wondering, where the heck are the vowels? You only mentioned P and R, which are consonants. Well, that's because the ancient Egyptians did not write vowels at all. They only wrote consonants. And this may seem very strange at first, particularly to those of you who are maybe used to European languages and their writing systems, or who are used to writing systems that are syllabic, that have whole syllables. But it's actually pretty common in other languages, such as those in the Semitic language family, like Arabic and Hebrew. And even in English, you can probably figure out what this sentence right here means when it doesn't have the vowels, especially if you're a native speaker again. Of course, this is gonna be harder when you're not a native speaker and the vocabulary doesn't come quite as easily to you. But this is something you might've seen again, probably in the past before we had the smartphones with the full keyboards and you were trying to save time while texting. But we've got PLZ for please, MSG for message, and TMRW for tomorrow. And finally, THNX for thanks. And for the most part, we're just leaving out vowels here. Sometimes we're leaving out also doubled consonants. So only one S in message, for example, and one R in tomorrow. And sometimes we're substituting also other consonants to make the sound more obvious. So like an X to save space instead of having to use both a K and an S. And the Z, because when we say please, we do tend to pronounce it more like a Z sound at the end instead of an S. Now, just like with Egyptians reading hieroglyphs, now very few people were literate, but those who were, they knew the writing system and they also, of course, already knew a bunch of vocabulary from speaking in their head. So when they saw these words, they already knew how to sound them out. 
they had the vocabulary in their head the same way we do when we look in english we see this word and we know it's please not we're not going wait is this palooza or something like that we're like oh please we can figure it out and the egyptians did the same thing when they were reading their script as well so we already saw with our house example how the hieroglyph of a house can both be what we call an ideogram or logogram that is it stands in for actually the word house and the idea of a house but it can also be used for its sounds p and r to spell other words let's look at another example in egyptian so for example the hieroglyph of an arm this represents the sound that we call ein this is how we say it in english and of course as you might have guessed the word for arm is spelled with just the arm hieroglyph the ein now you'll probably see this hieroglyph in a lot of lists of hieroglyphs you'll find online right that claim to be like the hieroglyphic alphabet and you'll see the arm as saying that it's actually an a but this is not really quite right there were no vowels in egyptian hieroglyphs like i mentioned the arm is actually the sound that we call an ein and english speakers usually just pronounce it like a vowel a but it's actually a sound that you make by tensing your throat and making a, a vowel sound at the same time so for example it's kind of like ah uh, so the word for the name of the letter is more like ein and those of you who are native speakers of semitic languages and others that have this sound in them please forgive my pronunciation this is the closest my english trained voice can do but it gives those of you who aren't familiar with these languages an idea of how this would have actually sounded when they used the arm it was really not an a however for simplicity's sake english speakers and other people who speak european languages generally pronounce this really like a vowel ah and this helps us actually be able to say egyptian words aloud even when we don't know where the vowels actually laid and what exactly they were so for example you can use the ein this arm hieroglyph to spell the word for to throw which is spelled with an ein an m an ein and an olive and then a bent stick usually english speakers just pronounce this as ama or something like that or ama of course these sounds were not really vowels it would be more of a some we don't know what the vowels were but those eins would have been kind of a uh, right and then the olive is actually more of a glottal stop like a stopping of the sound coming out of your throat but for the sake of simplicity again english speakers and other european language speakers generally would pronounce this as ama now in spoken language of course the egyptians had to use vowels everybody has vowels you make sounds and so forth and the word for house and the word for to go out probably actually sounded quite different even though they're written with the same consonants p and r so egyptians would not have had as much trouble sort of telling these apart as we might today because we're not used to it so this is a totally made up example this is not how the ancient egyptians actually pronounced this but as an example one of these words might have been pronounced pear or par and the other one might have been something like apura right which sounds really different but they both only have for consonants the p and the r the only difference is in the vowels so this gives you an idea of how these words probably sounded quite different in spoken egyptian but they're spelled very similarly in hieroglyphs but other than the context in which it's used how did you tell these words apart since they're both spelled for example with in the case of pear or any other word with that same hieroglyph that has the same consonants in the case of pear p and r right the vowels weren't included so how do you tell these words apart well that's what you're going to learn in my next video which is linked right here down in the corner and if it's not out yet make sure to hit subscribe so you won't miss it when it comes out and i'll see you in the next video